Hello, so I'm just going to describe spectral tractors and what it is, how it works, and what all the functions are. I'll try to do it quick, but it might take a while because it's a bit difficult to explain. Um, so what you'll do when you open the device is you'll drop in a sample, or you can route audio tr from some track in Ableton and record. Um, so I'll just drop in this sample. And I'll drop it in here. And then what we'll do is we'll create an, an attractor, which is kind of like a snapshot or of this of like one frame of the sound, an FFT frame. So I'll choose a point in the sample to snapshot and become an attractor. And then you can have up to four attractors, and you just click here to snapshot that part of the sound, and that becomes the attractor. So as you could see, I was clicking when it was at different points, and down here we see the spectral values a bit of that point. And these spectral values become an attractor for the sounding state. So what I do is I have a physics simulation, and it pulls, and this, this, the different attractors attract what you hear. So they're, they're like magnets, kind of, or like gra gravity, gravitational attractors, like bodies. So they will pull the sound you hear towards that spectral state. So I'll add in another sample that sounds different. This piano. And I'll create an another, track, another attractor. And, and I'll turn these two on. And you can hear now that the first sound and this new sound, this orange values and these yellow values are being pulled. So right now we're getting closer to this, this sound and we'll go into this view so we can see it looks closer to here. And if I turn up the speed of the simulation, now we'll creep our way back to the yellow and we'll see the spectral values morphing to these yellow values more. And it might not quite get all the way there. It just depends on all the physics and the attractors. So yeah, so uh, basically, if you have multiple attractors, it creates different kind of physical dynamics. Um, and it really depends on these physics parameters here and which attractors you select that will determine what kind of dynamics you get in the sound. Um, so, and a bit more about that. So there's two different main modes. The mode we're hearing now is the FFT mode. So basically, it becomes a physics simulation. And every single spectral value plus actually phase value plus actually phase value from the last frame becomes an attractor. So this is basically a physics simulation in a dimension of over 12,000 values. So it's like, that's, um, yeah, so it's a lot of, um, so basically you're hearing a interaction happening on the 12,000 dimension space. Now, you can change that mode under Attract here to 2D. And let me add some more attractors. And a different sound. And let me change the physics a bit. Sorry, it's a little flickery. OK. Um, yeah, so now in 2D mode, it's a bit different. We're still being, uh, these still are the attractors. And when the white dot is the sound that you hear. And so when the white dot is on an attractor, you do hear the spectral values. Uh, as you can see, it's getting close to the blue on here. I'll turn down the blue strength so we get a little more red. OK. And you can see here by the color when it goes to state. So the difference, though, is that, if you want to know, um, that this just operates in two dimensions. It's literally, how close is this dot to that dot? OK, it's really close. So 
then I just interpolate in that sound. But FFT mode is different. It actually is operating on 12,000 dimensions, not two. And so you get much different variety. Every frame, every spectral frame could be in a different state. Okay, so that's enough of the technical details. Uh, feel free to ask me more if you have more questions. Now I'll go through each of the uh, functions here. So, um, so let me just turn this down. Um, so yeah, up here at the top, we have the display that I've kind of gone over. This shows the distance from the spectral states, uh, the attractors, and the bins shows the current kind of frequency content of the sound you hear with a little colorization to show you what tr attractor you're near. Below that, we have this reset state. So if you click the drawing here, or if you press a MIDI note or whatever, it will snap to a reset state determined here. And this is because that changes the overall physics depending where it starts from. So if I have four attractors, let's get four going. And uh, now I have it, so if I have it on one and I click here, it resets to the first attractor. Two is the second attractor and so on. So if I click here, and that will change the overall uh, movements. Um, now if I have it, if I have it here on the dash, it will start with zero values. So in the case of 2D, it starts at 0, 0. In the case of FFT, it just starts at all 0. Now if I press question mark, it starts at random values. So here it could be a random point. Um, or here it, in FFT, it would be all noise values. So this just kind of changes the whole dynamics of the starting state. Um, down here are the physics parameters. So if we go to 2D no mode, maybe we, maybe we can see better. Um, velocity is the, the velocity limit. It's not necessarily speed, but it will affect the speed. But it could also send things out of control, depending on your power. So the power is how strong overall the attractors are. So if it's really low, yeah, it just won't even attract anymore. And um, and step is the most distance that it can move in one frame. So if it's really high step, it will also fly away. You see? So it has to be a higher power with a higher step or a lower velocity. Just you kind of got to dial them in some things. And it also depends on the attractors themselves, what will work and won't work. So you kind of got to dial in the physics a bit, depending on everything. And just find some movement you want. And speed is the overall speed of the simulation. So you can go really slow or normal speed. Great, so that's the whole physics. Now I'll kind of jump here to the attractors because it kind of deals with that physics too. So here's the attractor strength. So that will, right now the yellow one's kind of lower, the red one's at one. So that is just how strong they pull. And if they're negative values, they actually push away. So now it won't go anywhere near red. In fact, it won't go to the left at all. So yeah, and then you can turn them on and off here. And, um, and then like you know, you click here to set a new attractor state. Now above that is snap. So when I click a new attractor, it snaps to that state. If snaps off, if you create a new attractor, it it doesn't snap to any state. It will just it will just um, you know keep doing its thing. So snap is like if you want it to immediately go to that state when you create a new attractor, and not snap is you know the other effect. Now above here, we know kind of some stuff. This is the sample. Now pitch and gain deals with when you create a new attractor, this will offset the pitch and gain for it. So 
Mm, let me let me just do one attractor so we can hear it. Um, so here's a new sample. And so here I've just snapped the state at normal pitch. Now if I raise the pitch an octave and snap the same state, it's an octave up. So we hear that. And I can adjust the gain to lower. So it's quieter now and really loud. <laughs> okay, so that's that. And um, here is the routing for the audio input. So if, and here's the buffer size. So if I change it to, to two seconds and the route audio from my voice, which is audio two, now I can record into here. And hello, that's my voice. Hello. Okay, and then I can choose a part of that to create an attractor. Let's create two. Let's create four. And, uh, and turn them on. Uh, and get the physics right. Well, you get the idea. Let's go to FFT mode. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then here for the last menu, I explained the attract mode. Uh, let's go to 2D. There's an interpolation mode for 2D. One is, it just interpolates right now between the states. Uh, maybe I should load in a preset to show this so I don't have to get a good thing going. Um, sorry. So here's some other voices. Let me slow. Okay, so right now it's just interpolating, but if I go to here, this X, it crossfades them. So it sounds similar, but the difference is the crossfading is saying when it gets closer to an attractor point, it just fades that it just fades that spectrum in more. But in interpolation mode, it actually interpolates between the states. So you'll get more pitch kind of gliding effect between them and what have you. And if it's not close to any, you'll still hear it. Whereas in crossfade, if it's not close to any, you won't hear it. So those are the differences. And then here we have an attack and decay uh, for smoothing the spectral movements, especially if you have like a low speed or the frame rate's kind of jumping or something, or you want some like big trail. And then lock, locks it to the live transport. So I have to start playing live. Right now I'm just clicking the transport on and off with my space bar. So that's what lock does, so that if you don't want it sounding when the track stop, when the transport stop, that's what lock does. And then the R next to lock says that whenever you start the new, whenever you start the transport again, it will reset the, the state to whatever you set to the reset mode. So now it will always reset to one when I start. Now if I turn R off, it won't reset it and it will just pick up from when it left off. And then we have some pitch shifting here. It's a real-time pitch shifter, so the quality is so-so, but if, in case you want to just get an octave down or something, and then panning, and then gain. Now one thing to note about panning, especially in FFT mode, is that because FFT mode actually it is an attractor for the left and right. So the left and right could be at different states. And so you get a nice stereo space sometimes. But if you didn't want that, you can like pan all the way here and then use a utility to mono it. And then the left and right will be in the same space. So 
Alright, uh, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. And check out the info view, too. I try to make things make sense there. Alright, enjoy!